Nazis direct their fire across the harbor. Military and naval forces are cooperating to bring about complete destruction of Polish defense installations. The siege of Warsaw. The big attack begins 31 miles outside the capital. Shells are dropped into Warsaw without let up as day by day the Nazis forge a tighter ring of steel around the almost helpless city. Russia attacked Little Finland. The valiant Finns fought the Russians to a standoff. Having slashed through Luxembourg, Belgium and Holland, five German armies fanned out across France. Treachery and incompetence had doomed the nation that only a decade ago had been leader of Europe. Now the campaign mounted in fury as France crumbled. The Maginot line was still there. The Nazis had merely outflanked it. Now they tried direct attack, and the Maginot line fell. times Nazi Field Marshal Rommel smashes eastward toward Suez, his artillery blasting the desert. Twice the British counter-drive to the west. Mastery of the air is won first by the Axis, then by the British. And mastery of the shell-torn sands of Libya seesaws back and forth. Earth comes a Nazi bomber, 
one of hundreds knocked out of the sky. On the burning desert, first the tanks advance, then a smoke screen shields the advancing troops. Gun emplacements are set up to hang a curtain of steel in the sky if dive bombers attempt an attack. A fearless cameraman pictures the shelling of a supply train in the thick of the fighting. Tanks and trucks get through the shell fire to provide desperately needed reinforcements. The Nazi artillery, firing blindly, harasses Orkinlick's men and machines constantly. The defenders are forced to salvage disabled tanks, even under fire. They have lost far too many in the retreat from Tobruk to wait for another convoy to bring more. This one's too close for comfort. And so, the fight for Egypt goes on, in the air, in the desert, and at sea. It's a desperate battle, a battle in which strategy and leadership are vital to victory. Long-range guns hurled ton after ton of high explosives into the heart of the city. The Battle of El Alamein begins. The war was heard in Alexandria, over 60 miles away. The 8th Army was unleashed.
Silenci! Agon! für die schwere Artillerie. where strong defensive positions were held by a tough and a stubborn enemy. Soviet armies pounding the Nazis from the Black Sea to the Baltic.
I don't know. Sometimes you gotta get a different slant before you really see a thing. Like, you know what I mean. I mean, I heard the guns growing every night. Sure, but till I got on this brass salvage detail one day, it never really hit me how much of what was going on was going on. I mean, it made you wonder how there was any mountains left, much less, you know, little stuff like houses and people. I tell you, you should have seen all that brass. It was during this period that Anzio Annie became especially well-known, though not popular among the inhabitants of the beachhead. Actually, Anzio Annie was not one, but two huge German railway guns, called Robert and Leopold by the men who directed their fire into every corner of the crowded perimeter. Sturmgeschütze zerschlagen einen sowjetischen Angriff. Panzer mit aufmontierten Werfern. Mehr und mehr geben sie mit ihrem vernichtenden Feuer der Schlacht ihr Gepräge. day battle, the balloons brought down 279 of them. Anti-aircraft guns accounted for 1,500 more.
the Germans' own guns, captured, were now turned against them. Shore bombardment begins at 0705 hours, 15th of December, lasting 20 minutes. Another Jap air attack. One of our warships is hit. Then there's the Jap front proper. For him, that shifts every day, backwards. He expected to fight, but he never expected to be remorselessly shelled to pieces. That's what's happening. And batteries like these, manhandled into position, have turned the tide of war. The Japanese storm Meiyu Ridge in force. Allied artillery turns the attack into a rout. This is the reality behind the brief communiques you read in your newspapers. Yet out of it all, day by day, comes news of victory. Mobility characterized warfare in World War II, and self-propelled howitzers gave artillery the speed and movement it needed to increase its effectiveness. Evidence of this effectiveness was everywhere as the Axis nations crumbled in defeat. Closing in on Mount Suribachi on Iwo Jima, the 5th United States Marine Division fires on Japanese gun emplacements studding the mountain. From Suribachi's 500-foot elevation, enemy mortars hold the entire island in rain. Navy backs up land artillery, giving cover to the 40,000 Marines fighting on shore. Artillery delivers heavy fire on the central strong point of the enemy's defense line, the garrison village of Shuri, which is too heavily fortified for frontal assault.
offensive sea and air bombardment delivered against Japanese OP and battery positions, as well as troop concentrations, aids in making untenable the high ground commanding Naha, from which the enemy is directing his defense of the city. Against stubborn, one step at a time withdrawal, our troops fight their way through the suburban perimeter of the island capital.